Would the US absorb a nuclear first strike? Let's talk about it. So there's been a lot of talk about nuclear strikes, nuclear war, EMPs, all this stuff due to Russia invading Ukraine and the war over there. But what is the actual policy for the US and would the US actually absorb a nuclear first strike? So there's some documentation out there and there's some precedent for this that the US actually probably would absorb a nuclear strike. So let's read the quotes. So this is a quote from the US strategic nuclear doctrine. It says, we direct our military forces to continue to posture themselves in such a way as to not rely on launch on warning. So launch on warning is where you would strike first or if you had knowledge that a nuke was coming, you would send a nuke first. Um, so that's launch on warning. So not rely on launch on warning. And to be able to absorb a nuclear strike and still have enough force surviving to constitute credible deterrence. So absorb a nuclear strike. And then it also goes on to say, our policy is to confirm that we're under a nuclear attack with actual detonations before retaliating. Did you hear that? Let me read it again. Our policy is to confirm that we are under nuclear attack with actual detonations before retaliating. Wow, that's shocking. So apparently, according to the U.S. nuclear strategic doctrine, we wouldn't even retaliate until we confirm that there was a nuclear detonation on U.S. soil. So that's pretty scary to think. I don't want to absorb a nuke. I don't want a major city to be absorbed by a nuke, whatever that even means. Um, I think we should do whatever we can to stop this from happening. And if that means, I don't know, something preemptive, maybe that's what it takes. I don't know the answer, but I don't think letting us absorb a nuke should ever be in the options or in the cards or be the official doctrine of the US. So this is pretty concerning. There's been a lot of just talks about this lately and just hearing what we would actually do in the actual response is not comforting at all, but it's also not surprising. Um, I was also reading if there ever was a nuclear strike, there would most likely be an EMP first. So if you don't know what an EMP is, it's an electromagnetic pulse and it's a it's pretty much a nuke too, but it's a nuke that's detonated in the atmosphere and it's meant to take out all electronics and defense systems and communications. So the point would be to take out communications and then drop a nuke. So it was saying that you would have an EMP, the power would just be out for five, 10 minutes, everything would be out, your car wouldn't work, your phone wouldn't work all these modern things that have computers in them would be fried and wouldn't work anymore. And yeah, five, 10 minutes later, there would be a nuclear bomb dropped on most likely a major city. Um, but who knows? There's no, there's no like containment. Once you're at that level, it's who knows? Once one's dropped, they might just drop them all. They might just drop a hundred, drop a thousand. There's thousands of these things and, um, confinement in Russia is the largest, has the largest arsenal of nuclear weapons in the world. So that's a pretty scary thought to think that our government would absorb a nuclear first strike and let our country take that hit. You might not even know. That's the thing. It's like if it says there would be an EMP before and the power's out for five, 10 minutes, all communications or whatever, and then there's a nuclear strike. So you might not even know until days after because there's no communications, especially if you live in a more rural place. I live an hour outside of the city. We might not know for a few days what's actually going on because there's no communications. The cars don't work. Like how, how would we even get out there and talk to these people? So EMPs are kind of um, zone restricted, geographic restricted but i was also reading that 
there, you could have an EMP that could affect all of North of America. So that's a pretty scary situation that all of the country could be taken out at once with an EMP, all the electrical grid, all the internet, all the phones, all the electronics, all the cars, all the communications could just be zapped in an instant. And there's these war games that have been going on since the Cold War, uh, since before that. And I feel like we're just reaching a boiling point, you know. The president even said, we're on the we're on the edge of a new New World Order. Um, the last New World Order, there was 40 to 60 million people that died, he said. And that was between 1900 and 1946. He said about 40 million people died, 40 to 60 million people died. And now we're on the verge of a New World Order. And it's just like, why would you say that? Are a bunch of people about to die? Are millions of people gonna die just like from the last New World Order? It was very eerie the way he said it and just all the things he's been signaling to, um, you know, food shortages, it's about to get real, um, threatening Russia saying we're gonna send troops into Ukraine and there's already troops there and you'll the troops will be over there any day now. Um, there's just all these things that are really escalating. I read that the US is leaving nuclear weapons in Poland and if you don't know where Poland is, Poland is literally right next to Ukraine. So this is a pretty dangerous situation where we're, we're leaving nuclear weapons in Poland. There could easily be, be a spillover over the border. Um, I can't pronounce it, but Maripol, Maripol, however you say it, um, I believe is pretty close to the border of Poland. I think it's only 10 or 15 miles from the border. So it would not be hard for some kind of mistake or some kind of accident to leak over into Poland. And then there, now there's nuclear weapons in Poland. So it's it's kind of a scary thought. They said they've already used hypersonic missiles, which you can put a nuclear warhead on and they're almost impossible to stop. We, they, he's already used those in the war. So this is like escalating very quickly. And I was also reading that Russia has moved nukes into Belarus. So all these things are adding up. All these things are like really moving towards this nuclear um, catastrophe, nuclear fallout. And it's something you should really consider. I know it's one of those things you can't really do anything about. So it's like, why worry? But even if you could just get some iodine for your family and just like know what to do, know just to stay inside and um, not go out for three days, whatever, as long as you can, try not to go outside, cover all the cracks and windows of your door. Um, you know, you might have to open up after a day or two so you can get some airflow, but these are things that you need to like know and think about because this is a real scenario. And like I said, if there is a real nuke that drops, there's gonna be an EMP before and you're not gonna be able to use your phone or look up how to do anything. So it's kinda just, and it's not just gonna get fixed right away. It's not gonna be like, oh, the servers are down, the internet's down. Um, no, it's gonna be all the electronics are fried. They just don't work anymore. They're not gonna work. Everyone's gonna have to get a new phone and a new this, and they're gonna have to rebuild new cell towers and new grids and all this stuff. It's gonna be a huge, disaster and huge liability and I really don't think you know I don't think anyone's ready for it I don't think you really can be ready for something like that obviously you can prepare as much as you can get food have a garden have chickens um, you know get your home said not live in the middle of a city because uh, cities are gonna be the target they're they're probably not gonna waste a nuke nuking the middle of uh, the woods you know most likely they could because they have thousands of them, but most <laughs> most likely not. Most likely they'll be very specific because they're not gonna have time to just drop a thousand nukes because it's just gonna be back and forth chaos. So it's gonna be any big city, any capital city's a target, especially coastal cities, like any, any major cities on the east or west coast are just completely vulnerable. Probably more the west coast because Russia's right there. Russia's right next to Alaska, so. And this is also another thing that could just be a false flag to 
it could just be, you know, set up for Russia to to blame Russia. You know, it could be some kind of inside job, inside false flag EMP, grid down situation. I don't know. I have no idea. So there's there's all these different angles that we just have to be prepared out, prepared about and have to think about. And, you know, the best thing to do is just start now. So start planting now, start a garden now, get food now, get books now, because you might not be able to, you know, the only way you might be able to even do stuff is just by reading a book, you know, you're not gonna be able to use your phone. Do you know how to really bake everything and grow everything and all the, you know, like it, this knowledge is, it's a lot to take in. It takes years to really learn all this stuff. I'm learning constantly and I've been doing it for years. So it takes a long time um, to really soak it all in. So get books, get knowledge as much as you can now because they can't take that away from you. They can't take your skills away from you. Um, so what do you guys think of this? Uh, would the US absorb a nuclear first strike? It's a pretty scary thing to think about, but these are actual documents that I'm reading from and these are actual quotes. So let me know what you think. Do you think this would happen? I think it's very likely with our current president, current administration. So please comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff down below and have a blessed day guys. Thank you.